so once you imported that I'm going to press 6 on my keyboard so I can actually see it on my model here on Maya and I'm going to I'm going to look at the eye area here I'm going to go to face mode let's isolate the face only okay so I want to see the eye so obviously that was uh, too big for that let's see let's click on this one see where that is at okay so apparently my I have two different uh, UV shells for the eyes for the eye area here but I could probably uh, just have them overlapping so if I select this one go to shell move that here try to overlap these as close as possible I'll just leave it like this for now okay just so I don't have to create two eye areas there let's go back to Photoshop and scale that down of course set it down there okay let's save that again and we can go check back here click on the little uh, let's see so to get back to the importing area uh, click right here on the arrow for color and click on reload and it's going to reload the image so as you can see it starts to work this way yeah and I think that's uh, kind of decent maybe a little uh, bigger than that maybe I'll just leave it this way for now of course you can always continue to tweak uh, look go back so there's more things that you can do in Photoshop of course you can paint over the uh, the already existing area here let's say if I wanted to create more shadow here maybe so I create a new layer I'm going to press B or click right here for my brush I'm going to hold down alt uh, just to sample a black color and I got my opacity to something really low I'm using one of those uh, template uh, brushes there so you could technically start to you can paint over the existing texture that you have you know create highlights or more darker areas as well so let's say I did something like that and I'll save it and I go check in Maya so this is a back and forth process it goes right here somewhere click on the arrow and most of the time you know how to click reload it just does it by itself as you can see it creates that area so you can continue to texture if you're more uh, used to to 2D painting instead of doing it 3D and you can paint highlights again and darken areas I'm going to delete that one and another thing you can do is you can overlay textures on top of the of the already existing image here so if I open something so if I wanted to create more like a fabric texture on the shirt so if I open a fabric for it so I have a few fabric pictures here that I got from CG Textures. Uh, I'll also provide this on my website, even though you can still go to CG Textures, create an account there, get a bunch of web uh, textures there. So I'm going to drag this one out. I'm going to scale it. And now that I have that, it's a good thing to name all your uh, and you can set it to let's say overlay or soft light and if you don't want it to change the color of the object 
can set it to a grayscale, so I, it looks like it has color to it. So if you hold down Control Shift U on that layer, you can set it to grayscale. Now if we go to soft light, we can reduce the opacity of it. As you can see, it starts to create like a. It looks more like it has texture to it, like a fabric. Let's like save it just so that we can see it. Okay. So I probably should have picked uh, something that looked better than that type of fabric, but but you get the idea. You can do things like that just to make more, just to make your textures look a little more realistic than than what they look so far. They look they look a little too plain. So you can make it look a little more real. So I'll probably pick something else, something a different texture that's not that one. Let's see. I'll choose this one, see what's the difference between this one and the last. You can do this with the whole thing. You can get like a skin texture. And of course you don't have to use the same blend uh, blending type. Use anything. And you can inverse the texture by if you press control I, you can inverse. If I save it and I check back to Maya. You know, starts to look a little more realistic. Not necessarily realistic, but more convincing than just having a plain, uh, plain color there. And you can do the same with the pants and everything else. You can have like a different type of layer. Even the gloves. And everything else. So other things you can do with your textures in Photoshop. You can change the levels. And you can do color correction. So there's plenty of ways you can color correct something. So let's say you wanted the shirt to be a little more orange. So let's pick an orange color. That one. I'm going to press B to use my uh, painting brush. And I'm going to start painting on it. You know, starts to get more some areas that have more orangey. So it's basically changing the color of it. And you can set this to a different blend mode here. No overlay. That's a good one. You can change the opacity of it. So if we enable and disable it, you can see how it changes the color. So you can do color correction that way. You can also use other ways uh, by using adjustment layers. If you use the curves, okay, and you can switch to say you want something red. You want to work with the red color. You want to add more red to the whole object. You can change the curve and less red. And bring it down. Let's say I want it less red for my brown colors. I say okay. So we can see the difference here. But say I just want it for some areas, not the whole thing. So what I like to do is if you click right here, which this is a layer mask. And if you fill that with black or white, right now it's filled with white white, which means uh, it has an effect on the whole thing. So if I press control backspace or in this case it will be alt backspace depending on the which ones uh, front and back so as you can see it has no effect on it right now and the whole mask here is black which means it's not having an effect on it so I'm still using my paintbrush so now I want to paint with white if I paint with white so this is black so white is going to make it so that it starts 
to show up the actual curves start to show up I'm going to increase my opacity here and this so you can see so as you can see it almost looks like I'm painting on it so I am painting on it but I'm painting on the mask which is the curves uh, adjustment layer so that's if I just wanted some areas to be affected by the by the curves as you can see and this is an undoable process so you can just delete it if you don't want it as you can see so that's how you can use curves for some color correction and there's plenty of other adjustments that you can use like the levels adjustment you can get your whites to be uh, brighter your blacks to be darker so you can use that so that's pretty much uh, all there is for tweaking your textures in Photoshop uh, using overlays on it and doing some color correcting and you can always paint on it you know if you want you want it to look more uh, have a more painterly look to it that's how you can do it I'm not I'm not going to show you how to do it here because uh, it's a time-consuming process I'll just do it real quick I'll just throw in some overlay textures some really quick uh, color correcting so that we can continue to the next video and pretty much the normal map uh, it's already done we don't have to do anything else remember just you just need to fix it within ZBrush so let's say you were done creating the whole texture and you had a bunch of layers here the last thing I want you to do is uh, go to layer and flatten image pretty much everything is going to be one layer and you're going to save this as a different file type it's going to be a Targa file type I'll save it as a copy leave the alpha channels on say yes and I'm going to click on the channels here make sure there's nothing here on the under the alpha so I'm just going to delete that one everything's there let's go ahead and do that again save yes okay I'm also going to open my uh, normal map and I'm going to save it as a target as well I find that actually the TIFF is fine but sometimes target works better in Maya so if you you ever have any problems in Maya using normal maps it might be the, the file type so something else you may want to know how to do is uh, creating a specular map so basically it uh, controls the shininess of the object so to create a specular map uh, to control the areas that you want to be shiny first you have to make sure that the image is a grayscale image it doesn't really, really have to be but it works best in this case so I'm going to make sure that this image is a grayscale so I'm going to press Control shift view okay and I'm going to use a levels adjustment layer so I'm going to click there I'm going to increase my whites and my blacks as well as well so basically whatever is white is going to be more shiny than anything else whatever is black is going to be less shiny this is just to show you the purpose of this don't take a mine's going to be like really rough here it's not going to be very well done especially since we have areas like the gloves which are were white to begin with and we pretty much don't necessarily want them to be shiny so if I were you I would just paint uh, make it darker make areas like that dark so let's let's work with the skin here just so we can see what the skin is going to be like we start to see the pores of the skin okay I'm going to create a more appropriate uh, map on my own time so the next video I'm probably going to show you what mine looks like this is just a rough uh, map just to show you what it's going to do 
so as you can see the eyes are really really white so that's going to be super shiny it's not necessarily what I want right now but as I said this is just to show you the practical use of it and everything a lot of the areas black so probably that's not going to be shiny at all so let's save it I'm going to save it as a separate file it's going to be a target file as well and this is going to be a specular map make sure it's a copy and save it so that's a specular map uh, I'm going to close it without saving it because that's, that was my diffuse map okay so now let's go ahead and apply all those maps in Maya so I'm going to select the object I'm going to rename my object here okay hold down right click and assign new material uh, we want a material that has shininess to it a Lambert material does not have any shininess so I'm going to choose a fog material you can choose a bling or anything else to have shininess I'll name it uh, Luigi Matt for material I'm going to click on the color and this time I'm going to select file because this is a, a Targa file, it's not a Photoshop file. And I'm going to choose my diffuse Targa file. Okay, so this is what I got. I'm going to scroll down to the material. Now I'm going to click under my bump map so that we can apply a normal map. Uh, make sure it's file and make sure this is really important that you switch from bump to tangent space normal now click on that arrow and let's import that and the final thing is the specular map which is going to be under our specular shading here and under specular color file and that is Luigi Specular. Okay. One more thing I want to do is I'm going to reduce the cosine on the specular one. You can play with that as well if you want. To. But I find that if you lower that, it's more faithful to the map that we created. I'm going to decrease the reflectivity. We don't want the object to be reflective. So this is pretty much it. So that's how you apply those maps to it. And the final thing that you want to do, if you want to make sure to preview the maps, you can switch to viewport 2.0. If your computer uh, it uh, can handle it, you can also click on the high quality render, which is the same as this icon right here. And click on that. And once you click on that, again the viewport 2.0. 0 makes it look a lot better than this but you can choose this one and this way we can preview the normal map and as you can see we have the details back from ZBrush some of the sculpting is back here and again I wanted to show you about the uh, specular map which controls the shininess as you can see if you remember the map I applied uh, for the gloves they were pretty white on the map so they look pretty shiny here obviously that's not what I want so I'll fix that later and the cloth uh, it doesn't have to be shiny really so I don't think it is in this case we can see the skin has some shininess to it for the pores of the object the eye seems to be too shiny probably and we can add some uh, kind of highlights on the map And again, we are using a normal map, so the the detail that we get back is not going to be 100% uh, like it did in ZBrush. It's almost impossible to get that because of the nature of the normal map. For that, you would need a displacement map. And again, as I said before, you can get those uh, probably some videos on YouTube as well. So we can see the difference between getting the details back from the 
on our ZBrush sculpt. As you can see, we can kind of see the sculpt from the fabric. So that's pretty much everything there is for the for the sculpting part and texturing part and baking. Of course, once you add lighting and all that and a good render, it can look pretty nice.